If you're not in a comfortable place, move to a comfortable one, get a drink if you want, and sit back. Because together we're embarking on an endless journey. There are two possibilities at the end of the video. You will either completely forget yourself, who you are, where you are, or vice versa. You will find your true self. Are you ready for an existential journey? Universe. According to recent estimates, it is 93 billion light years across. If you ask how the universe, which was born 13.77 billion years ago, is 93 billion light years in diameter, this is related to the expansion rate of the universe. As we know, the universe has been expanding at an accelerating rate for a very long time, so the speed of light is not the limit for the universe. That's a topic for another video. Now, when we say 93 billion light years, we say, wow, that's big. However, it is very difficult to perceive and understand such numbers. These distances need to be embodied. We will do that today. How big the universe is. Why are we doing this? We will talk about it at the end of the video. If you're ready, let's start. Firstly, ground zero. Let's start with the pale blue dot we're on the Earth. Actually, we don't live on a very small planet when you think about it. We said embodying. For example, if you jump in a car, if you were to circumnavigate the world at 100 km per hour without stopping, you would have to travel more than 17 days. Even if you jump on a passenger plane, you still have to travel for more than 2 days. So we don't live on a small planet at all. We've been traveling on this rocky planet for hundreds of thousands of years. We settled, we lived, we died. We still haven't finished it. Many people's lives are over in a very limited area, without even seeing other cities, let alone continents. This is a big, big world. Anyways, our minds have no limits, do they? Let's leave the world to our nearest neighbor. Let's go to the moon. When we look at the photos or animations, it seems like it's right next to us, right? As if we could touch it. However, there are 384,400 kilometers between us. Shall we jump in the car again? Let's say we made a road to the moon and we drove at 100 kilometers per hour without stopping. It would take us more than six months to reach the moon. Six months. We reached it, although not by car. It is the furthest place humanity has ever reached on the cosmic scale outside of the Earth. 12 people have walked on it so far. It is a great job, but we are short of time. Let's continue. When we expand our focus a little more, there are other planets in front of us. When we see these in animations, it seems to us that they are very close. But of course, that's not the case. It's not possible to show the actual scale. Solar system, a tiny piece of the universe is actually gigantic. For example, let's get in our car again and try to go to the sun. At 100 km per hour, we could reach it in approximately 177 years without taking a lunch break. This is a lot. Let's say we go by plane, it would have taken exactly 19 years to the sun that we think is right around the corner. What if we say we give up and go to Neptune? It is even more problematic. More than 5000 years again without a break by car. By plane, 600 years. So yes, the solar system is pretty big. That's why even just colonizing the solar system is such a big dream. However, we push the limits. Even though we couldn't go, the vehicles we built have come a long way because these vehicles can move much faster than a car or an airplane, sometimes even faster at 30,000, 40,000 per hour. For example, currently the farthest object in space is a man-made vehicle, Voyager 1, launched in 1977. It has now been traveling at full speed into the depths of space for over 43 years. It has been a long time since we left the solar system. It was in August 2012 and is now 22 billion kilometers from our world. So if you could travel at the speed of light, it would take you 21 hours to reach Voyager 1. By the way, you can still track the current position and course of Voyager 1 on NASA's website. Alright, it's time to get out of the neighborhood. Let's get out of the solar system. 
but there's a problem. Where is the border? There isn't a very clear answer to this. According to some, the orbit of Neptune. According to others, the orbit of Pluto is the answer to this. According to some astronomers, there is a belt known as the Oort Cloud with billions of comets. Of course, this uncertainty corresponds to incredible distances. Let's say Neptune is the boundary of our solar system. In this case, if we could move at the speed of light, we could reach it in 4 hours. But if we try to draw the border a little from the outside, from the Oort Cloud, it would take us 1.5 years at the speed of light when we set off from the sun this time. In other words, there is a serious difference between 4 hours and 1.5 years, depending on where you draw the border. We could reach the moon with the speed of light in 1.3 seconds and the sun in 8 minutes to remember what the speed of light is. Sounds like we are going to solve a lot of things if we could reach the speed of light. But it will take one year to reach the outside of the neighborhood even at this speed. Anyways, I guess I don't have to say we are just getting started. We haven't even gone an inch in cosmic terms. When we compare our solar system, which seems to have an enormous size up to this point, with our galaxy and the Milky Way, the limits of our minds will begin to be pushed even harder. Now, let's take the closest star Proxima Centauri. It is only 4.2 light years away. It's actually over there. Let's jump in the car then. Let's try to go. How long do you think it will take? If we were traveling at 100 km per hour, it would take about 47 million years without a break. If we are in a hurry and get on a plane, 5 million years. We are in a hurry. Let's say we jump on a space shuttle. For example, if we traveled at the same speed as Voyager 1, it would take 73,000 years to go to our neighbor, to the nearest star. So it's not too bad, but if we calculate the human lifespan, even at this speed, we could arrive after 2500 generations. A little further away, the brightest star in the sky, Sirius, 8 light years away. When we get a little further away, we come across our large neighborhood of stars. There are 52 star systems in this region. Some are a little dim, that's why we can't see it. But we can see some stars farther away more clearly. For example, like Betelgeuse. Although it is 645 light years away, we can see it quite easily. Because Betelgeuse is a star a thousand times larger than our sun. But when we look at our own interstellar system, we see a system 50 light years across. It is a huge system that you can reach from one end to the other in one million years with Voyager. When we leave this system behind, we reach the radiosphere. When we say radiosphere, we're talking about the place where human communication and the radio waves could reach since around World War II. This corresponds to this place. Talking about that blue dot. In other words, the waves we have been emitting since the invention of the radio have just reached the Cirrus constellation. If there is a civilization further away in the Milky Way, they haven't even heard of us. Actually, it's not a small area. There are three to five thousand stars in this area, the area called the radiosphere, an area 160 light years across. But let's get out of there too. Let's go to a thousand light years away. Isn't it too far away? But no. This distance is not even 1% of Milky Way galaxy. Can you just imagine how big our galaxy is? A single galaxy with an estimated 400 billion stars. When we say billion, people think, wow, that's a lot. But I want you to think again how big a billion is. For example, if you start counting by one, one by one, counting to a thousand takes 17 minutes and counting to a million takes 12 days. If you were to count to a billion, do you know how much it will take? 32 years. Yeah, that's a big number. A billion. And I hope I can explain what we're talking about when we say 100 to 200 billion stars. I wanted to emphasize this because things get a lot more complicated. For that reason, only if there are as many as 400 billion stars in our galaxy, assuming that every star also has a planetary system. We're talking about billions of possible planets. Our galaxy, which contains all of these, is 
120,000 light years in diameter and a thousand light years thick. Let's ignore the numbers. Let's imagine that our solar system has a size of 5 cents coin. The Milky Way is almost as big as the Americas, like looking for a needle in a haystack. And remember, our world is in these 5 cents, probably the size of an invisible grain of dust. And on that grain of dust, we exist. Anyways, let's continue. Let's break the chains here. Let's get out of the Milky Way to our neighbor. Let's go to Andromeda, 2.5 million light years away. Let's pass it, extending it to 110 million light years in diameter. We see the Virgo supercluster, which includes us, Andromeda, and the group of galaxies called the local group in which they are located. It contains thousands of galaxies, thousands. Thousands of galaxies containing hundreds of billions of stars and trillions of planets. We don't stop here, let's go further. We will come across our supercluster, such as the Virgo supercluster. Part of it is dark because the Milky Way galaxy is covering this part, we can't see it. As we get farther away, we come across quasars, ultra bright galaxies that were formed in the younger ages of the universe. Finally, we come to the map of the radiation left over from the Big Bang, which is called the Cosmic Background Radiation. When we look here, we actually reach the limit we call the observable universe. The limit of the last objects that light can reach us at the moment we are. And a giant system with about 2 trillion galaxies in it. 2 trillion galaxies. I guess there is no need to explain the size of the numbers anymore. Does it end here? No, of course. We currently know that the observable universe is 93 billion light years across. Beyond that, we don't know. But as we talked about before, when the accelerating expansion of the universe is taken into account, it is thought that the actual universe may be 250 times larger, trillions of light years. Now the real question, why are we talking about this? The answer is, of course, very personal. But for all the great names, philosophers, thinkers, scientists in history, the answer to this question is actually the answer to everything. Because the effort of man to understand the universe and the effort to understand yourself are actually very parallel. The better we understand the universe, the better we understand ourselves. As Rumi said, don't feel alone, the whole universe is inside of you. Yes, we are not actually trying to understand the universe. The universe is not something that we can think apart from ourselves. The universe is us, and we are the universe. We are connected to each other biologically, chemically to our world, and atomically to the universe. And this awareness is an awareness that can change everything, in every sense. This awareness tells us that we should approach all living things and the environment with respect and love. We may seem very, very small and insignificant, but it tells us how special we are. Knowing that every atom in our body is from stars that died a long time ago, ultimately tells us insignificance of quarrels, wars and simple troubles, that our time is limited and we should make good use of it. And as always, until we meet again.